We believe we can use innovation to improve delivery and access to healthcare so that it does not discriminate based on race, geographic, or socioeconomic issues. But first, we have to appreciate the fact that it is, in fact, a problem. I'm joined today as our lead speaker by Dr. Juliet Nevins. Well, a lot of the disparities um, affect women. We've heard in the last year about the increased morbidity and mortality um, in terms of maternal care. And if you look at other diagnoses, there too you'll find that a lot of the disparities affect uh, women across the board. And certainly if you get granular, you'll find that those disparities target women of color. When people don't feel um, involved, when they don't feel heard or seen, but that then too leads to worse outcomes for certain cohorts. I look at the issue around access in sort of a hierarchical function, right? Where you live determines uh, variables that directly impact your health, you know, uh, food, deserts, for example. If you have a complex diagnosis that requires an entity that's optimally resourced to take care of that, is anyone even re referring you? Do you have transportation to get there? Do you really have the health literacy to understand the concept of a higher level of care? Um, mm -hmm. And that's where I come in because I am very much about health literacy, educating the population so that they can really be um, involved in shared decision-making so that they can be stakeholders in, in what's happening around them. And with information, you can better vet what's for you, what's not for you. And if you understand at baseline, then you can have a conversation with your provider where you're going in with a different level of trust. You know, technology is very important. And I think as we emerge out of this pandemic, it cannot replace the the face-to-face -face interaction. We should think of it as an adjunct, not a replacement. Once you have established a relationship with your physician, you can then employ virtual access or virtual medicine uh, as a means of continuing care or continuing that relationship. Healthcare relationships between provider and patient, no matter at what level, are built on trust. Mm -hmm. So being able to develop that trust with your patient is important. A lot of times that is a face-to-face -face visit to begin with. We do need to help patients understand how do we help them triage from a perspective of do they need to be in the emergency room? Does it need to be a face-to-face -face visit in the office or does it need or could it be a virtual visit? The healthcare system is hard to navigate. And so solutions in that space, I think, would be great. There are avoidable disparities in our country based on systemic issues, race, race, gender, sexual orientation, all the things. And really what health equity is about, in my view, is, is, is reducing those disparities and, and setting the intention as a society that that's what we believe is the right thing to do. You know, there are ways that we can reduce disparities. There are ways that if we're intentional, particularly around using digital innovation, that we can bridge the gap. But if we're not intentional, as, as has been brought up, digital innovations aren't equally accessible, right? So actually digital innovation can deepen disparities if, if we're not careful. Um, perfectly on the nail is being intentional. And in both of my experience over um, doing work in Ghana and in Nigeria, you do have to be very intentional with what initiative you are putting in place and understanding the ecosystem and the environment that you're working on. Because a lot of the issues that they're dealing with and a lot of barriers that they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis is seen as almost a luxury when you come back over to the United States, but they are still prevalent throughout the United States in what we call these healthcare deserts, which are in the low socioeconomic communities within America. And as, as us as Americans who are tailored and trained to think as though that's something that just happens with a third world country, um, but, but that's actually false. It's something that happens, you know, in our neighborhoods and in our backyards, in our backyards. And on me specifically, I'm from Flint, Michigan, and, I'm, and I hit it day to day, every single day. Dr. Nevins uh, made an interesting point, is there a, there's a lack of trust in the healthcare system. And so at the Sagamore Institute, we're focusing on um, the importance of transparency and price transparency being one of those. If you have people that are already uh, leery of the healthcare system and they're going in, um, if they have the access to healthcare, 
then they're going in blindly, not knowing even what this appointment or this particular service is going to cost me. In many ways, if we just implement the best practice in clinical medicine, and there is not implicit bias or systemic racism, people's health outcomes are good, right? So, so then it's like the science is there to say, if we implement these things well, people can be healthy, right? So then you have to ask yourself, why aren't these best practice standards getting implemented in a standardized way for everybody, right? And to me, that's the heart of the matter. It's an ism, racism, right? Sexism. I mean, if I go into the emergency room with chest pain, I'm going to wait an hour longer than the man for someone to take me seriously, right? Um, and then because I'm Black and a woman, then I'm, I'm really in trouble. So we need to really be honest that it is a problem. Electronic med medical records or, or, or systems that facilitate care that is agnostic to race, gender, sexual orientation, blah, 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 blah. I don't think people understand that it costs the na national economy when there are disparities, right? It's expensive. And from the payer side of it, I can tell you, I can see how much money goes when things go awry and you have the, the person coming in with uncontrolled diabetes. Somebody is going to pay for that. And, and it's us, meaning that all uh, Americans. Absolutely, and I think it comes down to two things, which is one is a lack of accountability and lack of perspective. As far as lack of accountability, when you have these type of things, you have a health disparity, those begin to snowball. And once those snowball, because they're not being addressed, then you have the situations that we're in now. So about patients who are in postpartum. If, a, if you have a hospital who's constantly having issues who are mistreating patients who are going through postpartum depression, and, and if the hospital does not understand that this is an issue, it's never going to be addressed. As far as perspective, this is something that consistently happens as well. We have people in, in these positions within healthcare who don't have a clear understanding of what the patient is going through on a day-to-day -day basis and their, and their ability to gain access to certain care. That's a huge issue. You have a physician who's just saying, hey, you know, just go to your PCP. But there's a lot of different factors that go into that. There's transportation. And then if you have someone who has a chronic disease, you know, they're having food insecurity. All of this builds on. It's They're stuck in this cycle and it starts to go down their family tree as well as far as how they're viewing medicine within the family. And it starts to almost brainwash the patient almost outside of that healthcare system as far as how they can treat these issues. And you see it all the time with mental health. Mental health is almost non-existent in the Black community because that's something that we never had the, in, the initial access to an understanding of how to treat because these health disparities have, have been persistent in our communities. You know, sadly, we have a, a multi-tier system in terms of quality of care. People who are on Medicaid know that they have to go to the ER and that's how they're going to receive their treatment. Well, then that just bogs down the ER. It has this ripple effect. It affects the entire country. The, the you know, the importance of people knowing um, where to go or what they, what is needed is, uh, is critical. Health equity is not just about racial disparities in health. It's about a wide range of issues. So if we can uh, agree on what we're measuring and we can effectively measure disparities, then the next step is tying reducing disparities to value. You can watch the market move towards actually solving those problems. A lot of the cost issue in our health system also is, is inside of these pockets of underserved, vulnerable BIPOC populations. That starts with aligning on what we're measuring. You know, um, I'm just going to point out quickly, one of, one of the physicians um, and our CAB members in the audience talked about the fact that there's very limited compensation for health education. We got to follow the dollars, to your point, KP. Like, if we're going to educate, we got to pay people to do it. Darrell, you talked about processes that get passed down from generation to generation. You know, this is a place where you can innovate, right? The, you know, there are lots of things that you can do on a phone, on the screen to sort of interrupt that, that way of thinking within a family structure. I am privileged, right? We talk about white privilege all the time, but I, I learned that there's English speaking privilege, right? There is a privilege of someone who is educated versus someone who's not. And all of these 
privileges separate you and, and create barriers. So in terms of education, I think that's a great place to insert technology. Those are not things they talk about a lot in medical school. So we got to start at the beginning, right? right. And, and then educate the masses of healthcare providers that are out there now as well. As far as solutioning, it's getting boots on the ground and getting the innovator in the situation or bringing in a stakeholder who understands the situation firsthand. I'll never forget, I was hired to make modular beds for labor and delivery over in Ghana. I get over in the clinic, I walk into the maternity ward and I'm seeing the patients, they're laying on the ground, but I see all the physicians with a vial of blood tipping it back and forth. And I ask, what, what are you doing? Um, why are you guys just tipping this blood? And they say, oh, we can't, we can't bring the patient to get a C-section unless we know about the blood coagulation levels. I'm like, what about the lab? The lab takes 48 hours. Oh, wow. So we have some of those situations that I wouldn't have known if I would have never taken that trip over to Ghana, having my feet on the ground and understanding the situation firsthand, that's going to be important. And that's how a lot of devices, softwares, and initiatives are off target because they do not understand the situations from their own eyes and from their own situation. I love that point. Um, and it brings us back to Angel MD in my mind, right? It is bringing the innovators and the healthcare providers together really to um, develop the best outcomes for our patients.